great. Uh, guys, I think we're on and we're live. So um, for all those attendees that, that are here joining us uh, for a morning coffee talk, hope you have your coffee. I've got mine. I made sure I'm full. Um, excellent. <laughs> Yours is older than mine, Brad. Uh, the reason yeah, that no, it's we're so living, it is, it's, it's old, not as old as you, but um, it's old. Um, the reason we're a little bit late today is that uh, we could not get Neil's webcam working this morning. And so uh, we are we have Neil's online, uh, but uh, we'll, we won't be able to see his lovely face. So I, I, I'm very, very sorry you're stuck with mine. Uh, so um, I would like to introduce um, the speakers today because I'm just here as a, as a person uh, to sit in the background. And so first, let's introduce Brad Kay. Brad, could you introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are? Hey, I'm Brad Kay. I do uh, the technical support here and a lot of the education around our camera systems here, uh, primarily in phase one gear. Um, I've been a commercial photographer for the last 30 years, and so I'm able to apply my rigor from um, my craft to the rigor to these cameras, and they um, they combine to a synthesis to where um, I'm very comfortable on both sides of that fence now. Awesome, and, and we are both in the same office, if you can't tell. I am upstairs, so if you could push my camera above uh, Brad. Brad is downstairs, um, and my name is Dave. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm the one with all the debt, uh, capture integration, um, and so uh, the one that, that can't sleep at night. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not important here, so that's we're not going to go further than what, what I do, but the important person, Niels Knudsen. Niels, I want to hear everything that's changed with you and, and, and are you who you're working for. Can you give us yes. a look? Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Welcome. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I actually have been uh, with the, the Phase One company from the very, very beginning. I, I joined it, it within the first week or two from, from when it was founded. I, I knew the founder at that time. And, and so my role... For, for this has been to, to drive uh, image quality and and also uh, driving uh, how we created Capture One, the tools, uh, the ideas of of a workflow oriented uh, software. Yeah. But but the, b beside that, and even though that is 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 uh, uh, almost yeah, I think it is even more than 25 years ago. Uh, I have still been doing all the, the the color profiling stuff as something that 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 is my territory where i have uh, all the knobs to, to to turn for each camera and this is also why we are talking about the, these uh, pro standard colors today but there has gone some changes uh, the software business uh, in in phase one uh, was growing and it, it was growing so much that, that uh, uh, at a certain point, uh, it was decided to, to split up the company in a hardware company and a software company. Uh, so today, uh, Phase One and Capture One are uh, two different companies, uh, same owner. Uh, I'm still doing uh, all the color stuff for all the cap, uh, all the Phase One camera as well as as cameras we support uh, in the Capture One software. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's it still has the same owner. They're both yeah. separate companies. You guys are relatively in the same building across the hallway, right yes, now, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. And then we eat lunch together in the same room, and so so, and mm -hmm. and and we can have coffee on the same coffee machine. So 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 we are, we are close, uh, even though we are, but 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 we are in 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 terms independent on on what is the direction. Uh, we want to drive these things uh, in. Um, so you so. started with the scanning camera okay, with a trilinear array color. <laughs> yes, and then yes, yes. <laughs> that sounds like what a huge change it was from, you know, trilinear array to to algorithmic color. Um, yeah, amazing difference. It it it's it's a, a huge uh, journey. Uh, we can say that that, that uh, the, the the funny thing was that, that the, the scanning bags was actually able to deliver very high resolution files even 25 years ago. Uh, so you could have 100 megabyte files. Uh, the, the real issue in those days were that you didn't have any computing power that that could 
deal with those data. So, so the, the outcome of a file was pretty raw. It was you, you couldn't do much. You couldn't. So, so uh, you know, uh, everything we do today with with a raw file, it, it's quite complicated. And and before we actually have a, a pixel, lots of things has been done to it uh, to achieve that quality we have. Of course, the census has also uh, grown dramatically in, in in quality. But but without uh, all the gains in in, in software speed. Uh, uh, we wouldn't have this quality level we have today. Um. Wonderful. I just got to do a couple things of, of, of talk here. We're not going to hand it over to you guys. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with our interface, there is a chat and a questions on the right hand side. Uh, and so please, um, while everyone is talking, please go ahead. If you have a question, add it in there and we'll break in as much as we can to answer your questions. If you'd like to chat to anyone individually, <clears throat> you may. So there's there's that access on the right. And that's it, I'm handing it over to you, Brad. You are, are now um, the man. Great, thank you. So um, I've been with Capture Integration for almost six years now. And across that time, I've had um, um, at least annual opportunity to interface with Niels, whether uh, it was in Atlanta here when we were hosting events and he came into town and, and uh, could spend time with them here or over in Denmark or within this forum, within you know the online forum. I have learned a lot from Niels. And what's interesting that I've, that Niels really, really, um, um, made foundational in my head was that while this is a numbers science, while while all of this is mathematical, uh, the math with, with Niels, the math doesn't rule. He he looks at the color as an artist, not as a mathematician. So the I think the reason that Capture One delivers such uh, amazing color and now this this next level with these pro standard uh, profiles is that just because the number says that that's right, Niels doesn't necessarily agree with it, and he'll continue to tweak until it is right, even if um, mathematically it could be uh, somewhat confounding. Yeah. Yeah, you you are, you are absolutely right. Um, at the very beginning uh, of my time in in, in phase one, uh, we had this uh, camera system. I could actually travel with with a full set of, and and I was visiting almost all of uh, the color management vendors at that time, and and uh, to say, okay, here's a camera system. Show us what you can do with it, or show me what you can do with it, and and. Uh, Actually, maybe because it was the first time we could actually do a closed loop. Actually, you could buy something, put on a table, shoot it, put put it on the uh, monitor and print it, and you say, hmm, it doesn't look right. It doesn't. You say you have a solution, but hmm, how can you explain that? So I, after actually being around and, and visiting all these companies, it was obvious that that, that the, those companies that that was just trying to follow the math and 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 we also have to admit that that color science is, is a pretty new science uh, uh, even uh, you know we have the lab uh, delta e but we also have delta e with the, the sub name 2000 simply because in 2000 it was obvious that that what we had didn't work good enough uh, and and it is still obvious that 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 the uh, we have things that can help us, but but it doesn't bring us all the way. Uh, so so we designed uh, in phase one a system where we could profile cameras uh, in in a mixture of help of of uh, numbers, but but also uh, with a, a interface that allowed me to to tweak things so I found them uh, to be a the right compromise between being accurate and pleasing at the same time. Um, right, because I, I came from a you know a background of shooting film and then started digitizing that film and then started um, 
you know, outputting on my own printer from that film. And what I learned through print process is you could get a very, you could have a very accurate representation on your screen of what your printer was about to do for you because of, of the availability of, of print proofing. But the, but when I first started shooting digital, what I didn't realize was taking, you know, that 244 color chart and putting it on the scene I was shooting and as if that was going to contort color into accuracy, you know, shooting a 2D surface that had all those colors represented on it as if that was going to create um, a color calibration that was at all relevant to, um, to, to me turning the camera one degree of angle away from where that, that target was shot. Yeah, that, that, and it is kind of a, a misunderstanding that, that you can do color profiling and succeed with it. Of course, you can do some profiling by throwing in a color target in the scene and, and take a picture of it and, and have some software trying to, to analyze it. But what such a solution doesn't take into consideration is that, that uh, any surface has a way it interacts with the angle of incident light. And uh, if you are not doing exactly uh, the lighting you have inside the spectrometer, and, and you cannot uh, replicate that in a real scene, then those uh, lab values you read out of the target, they are only indicative of the color. They, they are not going to look like the color you are lighting in your setup. So, so that, that, that's fundamentally a, 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 a challenge that, 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 yes, and I would say most people, they would, if they try to do their own profile, they would all doing something that, that, that they will not be happy with. Yes, there are situations if you are in a sports arena with, with some really ugly uh, artificial light, uh, there you, you, can, you can gain for, from such a simplistic uh, profiling. But if you believe that, that uh, you can just uh, simply throw in a target and, and uh, make things uh, being perfect, uh, that's not going to fly. And also, what is perfect? Because again, uh, the other um, challenge is that you, can, you simply cannot be precise and, and deal with a large dynamic range at the same time. Uh, with our eyes, we can see a huge dynamic range. Uh, if you want a camera, it, it can only be precise in a certain limit uh, or cer certain range of that dynamic range. Uh, so therefore, a, a, an important part of, of making pleasing images is also to be able to handle the whole dynamic range to compress the color space so it actually fits for a monitor for a, a, a printing device uh, and and if there isn't any magic uh, math out there that that would describe that uh, uh, so so therefore uh, lots of those solutions out there where you just throw in a, 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 a color chart they are not going to solve all these problems. They they might solve a, a few colors, but the overall the it, it's much more complicated to 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 land all colors in in a pleasing yet uh, appearing to be correct way. Sure. Yeah, I've had that experience that you know you can you can make all those co the the colors that represent on that chart in that angle of light. You can make them look visually identical but it's it's like if you put too many points on a curve uh, mm. and then start dragging between those points the things that result as a reaction to having to get from blue to green in this strange path that has to be created because of how that green was contorted to be uh, you get you know bizarre uh, posterization sort of uh, effects so it just points to, you know, and at first I thought that was a, a function of, well, with 16 patches, that's not clearly not enough, so you need more patches, and <laughs> yeah. it, it just, it never, 
you can there's too, never enough patches that you can represent it especially again as that light turns and that object is a little different and how its reflectance um you know the 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 reflectance of something that is um a semi matte or a semi gloss green and how when when that changes you know you're going from a vivid green to the green that reflects the white to the green that brings in the shadow and and to say that a single color patch is going to represent that it it just it, it doesn't hmm. No, that, that, and, 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 and that's where you could say the, the, the way we in, in phase one have been doing colors uh, is superior because it, it, it adds that human touch to it. It, it makes sure that it, it's not only a numbers game, but, but it, it visually ends up being pleasing, uh, yet correct uh, looking. Uh, so what was the process that kickstarted the, the pro standard? Uh, profiles. Yeah, I, th I think um, to to explain that, I would uh, take a look at, at and bring you into Capture One and and talk about uh, this image here you see with with uh, the lady. Yeah. And and um, the thing we. Yeah, let, let me say, let, let, let's, if we talk about sh how are uh, we dealing with the tonality uh, from shadow to highlight, uh, that compression, how the, and, and you, when you are shooting, you, you need to do a compression of, of the full dynamic range. So therefore, there is this film curve, tone transition curve, and, and, um, the way that, that Capture One deals with that, uh, I would li like to, to, to talk more about that. So, so let, let's uh, first take a look at, at this and say, if you want to add some contrast to this image, then uh, I have here made uh, four variants of the same image. So, so let's just keep the first one to compare. So uh, a contrast curve that could be uh, something like an S curve. I go in in the curves tool, and I uh, I make something uh, like this. I don't know exactly how you are seeing it, but but um, I'm just overdoing it a little bit so we are sure that we see something. Uh, and if I now put up these two images side by side. Um, what we see with our eyes is uh, definitely I got more contrast in the image, but I see two more things. I, I see a, a tone shift. I see that, that the tones in the shadow, like on the arm here, they go more reddish and the highlights go more yellow. On top of that, we see it, it, it picked up saturation so so simply having a, a, an s curve in in rgb that will uh, introduce color shift and and some saturation shifts okay so um, I, that's actually why you have the option of uh, working in a luma curve in luma you are mathematically only changing uh, uh, the the, the lightness of a, a color you're not changing saturation and brightness so, so uh, let, let's try to, to do a, a, a s curve here to add the contrast and let's uh, compare it with, with the original <coughs> and and here we, we see a, a surprise again i will not say again but i it, it is a surprise when i saw this for the first time that yes, I see contrast, and I hope you uh, that is, is obvious. But but uh, it looks desaturated in my eye. Mm -hmm. I, I I hope you can see that too. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it appears it appears like it's on the way to black and white. Like you've desaturated it, but it's yeah. only because of. But but mathematically, it all the tones, uh, the hues here are perfectly the same over here. It's just our perception uh, and 
and and this has to do with with with, with I think uh, the fact that the way the human vision works is that we are used to combine uh, two things. Uh, we combine uh, contrast and saturation in a certain extent. So if you are out in in a, uh, for instance in in a, a cloudy day, it's totally overcasted. Every surface you look at will have lights coming in from all angles. Uh, it would scatter. So you will have low contrast, but you will also have low saturation simply due to uh, that you get white light uh, being mixed up with the, the original color of your surface. Once the sun comes out, uh, you have one direction of the light, you will see contrast. But as you get rid of all the scattering uh, on the surface, you will also see uh, more saturation. So, so we are, you know, uh, for us, we, we expect that contrast and saturation goes hand in hand. Not like we saw here, we, we, uh, but, but uh, a little bit hand in hand, and that's actually what what th that that understanding of of uh, uh, contrast and colors we have had in in uh, phase one for for uh, a long time, and we built that into to the exposure tool. So if you are actually adding contrast here in the exposure tool, we are doing exactly uh, something in between meaning that, that, that we are adding, uh, of course, the contrast, but we are also making sure that we're adding a little bit of saturation, so it simply looks natural. So if we combine these two images, we will definitely say that, that this is the same overall look, but it has just picked up uh, more contrast and, and more saturation. Uh, and and if, if we combine, all these uh, variants here, we see that, that the original, if you work in, in, in pure RGB curves, this is the result. If you work in a Luma curve, you get this result. And if you work within the, the Capture One exposure tool, you, you get this result. So, so we had this uh, understanding of what would be the ideal way of, of dealing with contrast and, and, and color. Uh, but we haven't built that into our profiles and, and how we were dealing with, with the, the color profiles for the cameras. So actually, last summer, uh, as you know, many people were working from home due to the COVID situation. Uh, and I had, uh, you know, I was uh, working uh, in the office together with one of the other uh, color guys and and you know coffee machine talks uh, said well um, why shouldn't we try to to utilize this technology in into creating uh, better colors for, for for our customers so we we we, we did uh, some small experiments and 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 very soon it turned out that that, that uh, we had something to to follow here and and uh, soon after we decided to 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 go for for creating these uh, pro standard profiles uh, for 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 the most of of uh, for all of the important cameras uh, we are supporting in in, in capture one. Uh, so that was actually the start of it. Um, so so, um, but how does that actually? Uh, if, if if we go back and 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 look at at some examples uh, to to guide you into because. Honestly, I was quite disappointed when we released the, the, the Capture One 14. Uh, I saw some, a lot of reviews about uh, the Pro Standard uh, colors, and and most of the reviewers they could just say, okay, the blue sky looks a little different, and and that was it. So, so nobody really, and and uh, I could say I could also blame myself not having had time enough to to educate the, the marketing people about what what it should be, but. But uh, it was obvious that, that uh, nobody really knew the benefit, and, and so I will guide you into to what are you going to look for and why is it better. Uh, uh, 
so here I have prepared uh, a number of, of uh, images uh, where uh, to the left we have uh, with the geniac profile uh, or, or the default profile uh, and here we have with a pro standard. Uh, So if if we start with with this uh, tulip, um, we see, um, and if if we compare, uh, what you should see, uh, at least what you see on my monitor is that that uh, on a classic profile uh, and you have a tone shift from shadow to highlight so it, like we saw on the skin tone uh, big, big, and, and it's, it's the reason why we have it is because we need you need to compress the dynamic range of, of the real world in order to capture both highlights and shadow and that is a curve similar to an s curve and if that is done in a pure rgb world you will end up having a small shift in, in the shadow and another shift in the highlights and, and in reds it goes uh, more bluish in shadow and, and more yellow in, in highlights. Here we, we on this side we see the, the pro standard uh, profile and uh, here it's this pretty much the same hue from shadow to highlight. Uh, if, if we use the, the before after uh, tool uh, I guess it, it, it's quite obvious to see how the highlights uh, uh, without the pro standard technology uh, takes this uh, color shift. Uh, can you see that, Brad, on, on uh, your yes, monitor? Yes, yes, of course, yeah. uh, of course, uh, with, within the limitations of the yeah. uh, small amount of color bandwidth that makes it across these webinars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so um, another example uh, here we have uh, a pumpkin, uh, and and this is the the, the classic look. Uh, it has a slightly color shift towards more red in in the shadow, and it goes yellow in the highlights. Uh, if we take uh, the pro standard, uh, it has the same tone all the way and if, if we oh i cannot do that here because there's a a, a white balance shift between those two but, but uh, we, we will see that that uh, that uh, this unrealistic tone shift but but it, it's not it, it's something we, we kind of got used to that that, that uh, but that's actually not how the world is is, is looking yeah. Uh, that that is uh, an effect you will see that uh, if you're shooting products. Uh, an example here uh, of we, we may not notice it, it, but but once you 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 compare it to the pro standard, you will see uh, two things also. Uh, let me just do the before and after here. Uh, down in the shadow, we see that, that the, the default profile goes red. Mm -hmm. And we also see it goes yellow in the highlight. But we also see that, that it actually keeps more tone in the highlight. That's another feature uh, of, of the, 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 the pro standard the color profile. So, so not only are, are they more consistent in, in color hues from shadow to highlight, they are also able to maintain uh, uh, more tone in, in these uh, highlights uh, and that's something that, that uh, uh, is very beneficial in, 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 in portraits uh, for instance uh, um, we will see that, that the dark skin tones here they would tend to go uh, more reddish and highlight more yellow. It's much more uh, with the same true tone uh, all the way from, from shadow to highlights here. 
uh, if we take a more uh, gender tone uh, we can see that that, that uh, its ability to keep the skin tone up in the highlights uh, with the pro standard is is much better and and you don't get this uh, yellow shift in in in, in the highlights uh, so 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 uh, it, for for both uh, you know product shot the portrait shot uh, th th that really helps uh, in I have some examples for, for, from um, studio shoot uh, where I just to prove that that, that, that this is uh, with, is these are a lot of those colors that, that our customers uh, are, are struggling to get right and 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 the reason why these colors are not getting right because they are quite bright and and therefore mm -hmm. this uh, tone shift going yellowish will classic with the, the, the uh, old default profiles they would have this tone shift uh, and and uh, I think actually I can go in here and do those peach just, colors were always difficult because yeah, the we, peach being close yeah. to a skin tone and so in skin tones you didn't want it to go to peach but yeah. peach yeah. would tend to get to skin tone yeah. uh, here it, it, it's very obvious to see up here that, that we have the tone uh, and it and it, it, it's, it, it's in the right hue and then it has more tone than, than here it's almost fading out in, in, into to to uh, being white. Uh, there's a huge up here in these colors. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and the, but even in, in, in like a, a, a bright red here, we will see that, that it, it, and, and it, it's amazingly correct. Uh, if, if you have this set up side by side to you, I actually shot it in and profiled it here for, for uh, some uh, broad, spectra uh, constant light so I can I could actually do this experiment uh, do the colors and see the result with my eye mm -hmm. because you can always see you know if, if you're using flash and, and you're profiling in flash and, and how are you actually verifying that that it, it works that is a really hard thing but therefore I have this Certainly. special set up so I can actually use quality broadband uh, broad spectra light and 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 do the experiments with the profile and, and, and see that it actually does the job in, in the right way. Uh, we will even see that that, that the yeah, much better uh, correct tones of these uh, very bright yellow. Uh, um, so. Uh, that, that 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 that's uh, you know that's the benefit you get you you get uh, more correct colors uh, you get more tone towards the highlights um, uh, when you are doing that then you are also um, uh, you may buy some extra issues getting because uh, if your camera and if you are not using a perfectly uh, right white balance then with the classical profiles if you had a slightly tone in a white background that tone will almost disappear into neutral white with the pro standard if it has a tone the pro standard will try to keep it uh, so you you have to be more aware of of your white balance, and 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 even sometimes if if you are in a landscape image and, and you compare and say hmm I don't think it 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 looks right uh, then it might be because the the white balance simply need a, a tiny tweak to look right. Uh, that's something you you have to be aware of. Uh, 
there's also an, another thing that that, that people um, how should I say we are all used to a, a certain way of looking at at uh, scenes like a sunset. Uh, if you are watching uh, BBC nature programs, this is the kind of sunset you will see. And and uh, something that that uh, we may not really notice and and think about is that always we have this burnout zone going totally yellow. That is not how a sunset. If if you take that scene. And, and, uh, and you bracket it until you are not overexposed here, you will see that, that it has this pure orange highlight here. Uh, but we are, we are simply so used to it. Uh, so so uh, if you use a pro standard, sometimes people say, hmm, it, does, it doesn't look right, they say, because they have become so used to this uh, over yellowish uh, look. Uh, and of course, that's a taste, and and and, uh, but that that's simply something you should be aware of. Uh, the last thing that that, that uh, you should be aware of is that uh, with the strategy of of trying to to keep a tone further up to the highlights, uh, then you will also end up in a situation where uh, at a certain point your dynamic range is, is, is too limited and you have to do something. Uh, so um, you, you will or more often be, if you're shooting sunsets, get into a situation where you need to be more, uh, taking more care of, of uh, how bright your brightest part are, uh, because uh, one thing that the, the traditional way of, of dealing is that, that how colors uh, fade out in highlight is, is uh, works perfectly. Even, but that's a part of that the, the color tone shifts, but then it shifts because it's in RGB and they all go towards white, and therefore. A, a burnout situation is, is always handled extremely gentle with the classic profile. Uh, that may not always be the case uh, with, with uh, the pro standard because they, they try to keep everything as within a reasonable dynamic range. They try to keep the tone as correct as possible with the right tone and all that. But if you're pushing uh, the dynamic range too much, then at a certain point it, it it will have to, to do some kind of transition from keeping the tone to losing the tone. Uh, so yeah, I, I hope that, that that gave a, a, a little bit of understanding of, of uh, uh, what is uh, the difference uh, between a classic profile in Capture One uh, and, and uh, what is uh, the pro stand and, and, and why is it uh, uh, something very different uh, in reality. Did a, um, I mean, beyond the time aspect of it, of have, of going backwards and looking at every profile that had ever been created for some of the more legacy cameras or for older, you know, phase digital backs, um, it, was was there a new tool that you were able to to make use of, or was it more computing power that that gave you the ability to 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 um, to control those trailing edges as they go to white, as you say, to keep the color accuracy yeah. in them before they bleed out. And for sure, it 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 it's uh, it's not something that uh, would have been possible to do ten years ago. The penalty in processing time would have been too much. Uh, but but now it, it it's nothing. You, you don't notice it at all. Uh, I, I think compared to how many other steps we are doing, uh, we, we, we may add 20% more in, in only a tiny part of the whole processing chain. Uh, so it, it's not anything you are noticing now. Yeah. 
but what we we definitely had to develop uh, a new way and and in in this process we developed some 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 new tools that, that uh, made me able to to do this process uh, in in a, a, an easier and and more precise way uh, than I have been able to do before. Um, but, how do you? But, but, but still, um, I would say that that uh, it 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 again we have to remember it. There is still no automation, hundred uh, percent, where you just press the bottom and there you have. Uh, for each of the pro standard uh, profiles uh, I have made, uh, it's a matter of uh, doing some studio shots of, of, of course, color targets, but then it's also a huge number of real world images in, in a variety of, of different lighting conditions. And, and uh, on top of that, uh, tweak the profiles so, so everything uh, looks right. Uh, and, and. Do you have um, kind of rules for your set for yourself that you work by when it comes to the time of day that you'll make final decisions on color? Because um, <laughs> uh, I know, I mean, it, it's so, um, uh, perception is so amorphous, like, what what you're seeing as reality at any given point. So I, I know that you know um, I, I know that even uh, food that you eat can can um, sway your perception of color. Um, so what, do you have any do you have any rules about that for yourself? The way you, you um, not not very strict rules, but but I I I hate uh, days with sunshine because. Uh, even though you have blinds, uh, the, the the light inside your room would be disturbing. So so a day overcast a day uh, that that is essential for me. Uh, I also always use I have a a, a controlled uh, lighting booth uh, beside me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always have a reference a real world reference of some objects that I have known and seen for years. Uh, so right. a consistent one because it's 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 fixed lighting. It's not changing over the course yeah. of the day. Where a lot of times, you know, in the absence of having uh, uh, either a light set up or a light available, you know, you go outside to evaluate, you know, something that you're looking at. But that time of day is still affecting your perception of it uh, the, the, as to even the color within your shadow. So um, yeah. I know that's always a, um, a challenge to, to, to know what, what is consistent when you're comparing against. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and that, you know, a, a huge part of, of the profiling is actually, you can say, comparing different variants against each other, different light. So, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of A, B, A, B uh, on, on profiles and, and improvements uh, to uh, simply because you, you, you can easily be biased and you can easily work on a, a certain aspect of the color uh, and then forget about something else. So you every time, I do a change. I I, I fl test flight on on a large range of, of images uh, before I, I I say okay for 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 this uh, change. Uh, yeah, I know. Even with myself, uh, between my eyes, I have a bias between them in color. So when I'm when evaluating color, I'm making sure that I'm seeing them in my stereo vision, and that's my standard because if you know, when I'm evaluating two images and one's on the left side of the screen, and one's on the right, I really have to make sure that I'm fully viewing each of them and not just keeping and not staring in the center of them because that'll that will tweak my um, ability to, to to move in the direction that I would like to. Yeah, I actually have a fun story here that that <clears throat> even though I'm using the best uh, ISO monitors available, uh, then 
for some reason, my monitor ended up having a slightly white balance gradient across. Uh, and uh, my profiling didn't warn about that. Uh, and, and I was, uh, it ended up from that day when it happened that, that uh, I always loved the images uh, to the left. <laughs> <laughs> and and then I said hmm, that that is actually strange. <laughs> uh, and and uh, they, they, then suddenly say, hmm, hmm, what if I sw swap them around? And then suddenly, hmm, okay, they they keep on being my favorite on on the left. Uh, so so hmm, uh, that 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 was scary that that they actually suddenly uh, stopped working. Uh, but, and, and uh, was that something that calibrated back out when you forced a calibration on nope. it, or was that something that needed service? You could only uh, say that that well, it was yeah, it, it was maybe five years old, or four years old. So it was just to say thank you for for <laughs> for the help during that time. Thank you for your service. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it would have been it's, more nice with a, a real breakdown black screen or something that told you that. Uh, right. I'm not working anymore. <laughs> um, what's uh, what, what do you think? You know, so so as you've raised the bar on what the um, output, you know, what what now the color is showing up as in Capture One. How do you did, did that put more magnification on the inherent abilities of each of the camera brands as to which ones bloom, you know, in the pro standard um, uh, profiles yeah. compared to, uh, you know, like, you're, <laughs> it's better, but, you know, like, it, yeah. are you seeing kind of the failure of, of the, the, at the sensor level to, to, to gather? Uh, I, I I still Without see. Names. Uh, I, I I still see that that despite uh, new tools and 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 uh, that that uh, sensors will the, the you know the the technology of a sensor will end up in a look no matter that that I you know. Do the same thing. Try to do the same thing. There will be a, a, a loop that is attached to a specific sensor. Uh, I, I don't know whether that that it would be ever possible to 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 not have that loop, but 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 uh, that you know the span of of uh, um, of differences we see between brand is less now than it was uh, if if you start like taking a, a you can say a canon 5d uh, profile uh, when that was introduced that might be more than 10 years ago uh, the tools we had at that time uh, forced me to do some compromises in colors that, that if, if you today see a, a pro standard profile for, for such an old camera, you would say, okay, that's actually amazing, uh, big difference. It, it's not only uh, the highlights and shadow and the tonality there, it, it, it's all through the color palette that, that it, it simply is more accurate and pleasing. Uh, that's funny, that's, that's an inverse relationship that I would have thought being that original 5D was a 12-bit capture and I would have thought that it would be still the supreme 16-bit captures or 16-bit extended out of a, a phase one IQ4150 that would gain the most benefit. But that's really interesting that an old 12-bit file really blooms with um, this new treatment to it. Yeah, it, 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 um, I, th I think the, the methods we are using uh, are better able to handle more quirky sensors <laughs> uh, but but they 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 for sure uh, are you know having a, a pure file with, with, with 16 bit data that, that 
that can never be be swapped out for 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 fancy algorithms. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, the you know I find in my own work the um, when I'm shooting IQ four one fifty and I my my base exposure say for an architectural situation will always be a a nine or ten ten frame frame average to to you know smooth out any of of the noise patterning and to give me all that shadow recovery and everything and having that as that that base file with all of that you know absurd amount of information in it uh you know just lends to how how subtly you can make changes and um them be really really pleasing uh you know when you're when you're forcing uh an image around um and i've seen you know i've seen this because uh, you know i haven't sh shot certain cameras in a long time and then i'll either shoot them or um as a commercial retoucher i'll also be given other people's photography to have to work on and seeing i'm so used to working within you know the phase files where i've got so much latitude to do things i'll go to make a move in capture one in the raw file and it'll fall apart in in front of me and um you know it's it's a drastic difference when when it when you're talking about the the fidelity of of the upper limits now of what you know many of these sensors are doing um when you when you said that the the sensor itself has um a look um it did is that even when included say um that the same physical sensors being used in a diff couple different camera brands uh so when the file comes off the sensor and it's sitting there as the is the linear flat file absolutely the same that comes off or is each manufacturer's um, um sauce you know as it processes in the camera going to change it um it, it, it is mainly uh, the combination of um the 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 filter color filter design and the the cut off of uh, UV IR uh, that determines uh, the 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 look of of uh, because that that's where you start with and then you need to 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 uh, squeeze colors in in different direction and and uh, the 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 more uh, easy distributed the colors are and, and, and the more depths you have for the colors, uh, the easier the, you can end up with, a, with the final result. Yeah. And that's, um, <coughs> excuse me, the UV IR cutoffs and the, 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 the color um, lenses, that's something that's done per manufacturer, not yeah. per um, chip developer? All right, that makes a lot of sense. Very interesting. Um, so we're getting towards the end of our time here, and I haven't seen any questions from uh, anyone other than the intrepid uh, Steve Hendricks has to do with um, uh, questions regarding about color. Uh, any of you um, fellas that either I know so well or don't know at all, uh, I'd like to get a question in here. Because area. So Paul Caldwell is asking, uh, how do you enable the ProRes um, profile? So that's under uh, base characteristics, Paul. Uh, Niels can show you that real quick. Yeah. Um, I don't know what do we have. Uh... So yeah, here, this is actually a Sony camera. I have I have a lots of profiles here, but here is is uh, uh, the drop down. We have this uh, under the color tab, uh, base characteristics. Then we have ICC profile. Um, 
you have generic. I, this is a, so, some I do, uh, but but the, a default installation will have, uh, <coughs> yeah. Depending on a phase one camera, will have a, a range of of uh, classic profiles, and then they would have the pro stand. If you decide that uh, you like the pro standard better, you can select the pro standard and you can go up and say save as default for your camera. Yes. Uh, Marco asks, uh, thoughts about how base characteristics curve affects the profile? Uh, he says he finds the pro standard too yellow for skin tones, personally. Uh, any comments on making a new profile with a negative hue shift for skin tones to address this? Um, it, you know, the, 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 the trick is actually that, that the, the, the way the film curves and, and the, the new profiles work together uh, is um, the key. So, so first of all, that means that, that uh, we, we have heard people uh, who didn't want to pay for the upgrade. They just say, we take a trial and we we steal the profiles and install them in, in the Capture 113. Uh, but then it doesn't work because uh, Capture One recognize some of the tags in this pro pro standard profiles in order to to deal and and handle the the, the film curves in in the right way. Uh, so, so that was one point. <coughs> uh, whether we are going to to create, uh, uh, you would say, take the 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 existing range of profiles and upgrading it. Uh, it's not something that that uh, uh, is in our plans right now, but but uh, we are always listening to to uh, what our customers uh, would like to have. So, so, so if, if this is a wish, yes, I would expect we will see it. So, is that something that um, you know he could? Um enable pro standard but then make use of um, a revised style for himself it's going to remove the yellow you know some of the yellow from the that that band of of tone uh, if it if there's a consistency to it that uh, he doesn't like you can always mitigate that through the color editor and uh, and then if it's consistent enough then you can you know, label that as a style to combine. For sure, yes. But you can also, and uh, you can always take uh, whatever profile we have, and and uh, do a tweak in the the color editor, and and right. save it as a new ICC profile. Uh, and once you have done that, you can say this is my new default profile. So, right. So, so that it, if it were if it were a consistent enough change, then yeah. he could blanket it, you know, call it a new, say, then save it as a, a new ICC profile and then yeah. just use it that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Jacob Bukowski would like to know if he if you can comment on best practice when shooting the achromatic cameras when it comes to UV uh, IR filters or red, orange, yellow, green filters, etc. Um, <clears throat> An anti-color question. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, um, I I think it, it it's a, a matter of of taste. I I for myself I did the uh, for portraits, a variation of uh, filters and and uh, and I right now I can't remember my, my favorites, uh, and I did the same for 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 landscape and and uh, um, 
but I would say, of course, you can say it, it can be pricey to buy all the different filters, but it's also a pricey camera, and, and uh, sometimes you will need them all. Uh, th that's what I did. Uh, I went out and, 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 and did a lot of combination and came home with, with a, a lot of different scenes and sat down and said, what is my favorite for, for, for this kind of uh, shoot? And and uh, but right now I, I cannot remember uh, my com my favorite companies. Okay. Um, that is all of our questions right now. Neil, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Um, it's uh, too bad that we uh, weren't <laughs> able to get over to um, Denmark um, yeah. last year, but hopefully um, yeah. things are on the change and we'll get to physically see you again. Yeah, me too. And I'm happy that I have this opportunity here online. And I can just tell you that, that the situation in Denmark, uh, corona-wise, uh, is getting much, much better. We are around 50% of the population have now got their first uh, vaccination and, and uh, we expect that uh, we are done by the end of August and, and uh, the society is opening up again and so, so <laughs> things should be normal from September here in Denmark so, so yeah then Great. we can meet physically again. I look forward to that sir. Uh, everyone, thank you for participating in this uh, coffee talk. Uh, I'm going to continue to drink coffee and uh, test cameras and do all the things that I get to do today. Niels, have a pleasant evening in Denmark. And yep. uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. Yep. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. And enjoy your day. Bye-bye. Okay. Take care.